The title of our today's presentation, as you see, is the overview of medical medicinal plants in Afghanistan, which will be presented by uh, Professor uh, uh, Mohammed Usman Babri. Um, I would like to let you know shortly about uh, the profile of Professor Babri and his former assignments. Um, Professor Babri has worked as a professor at the uh, formal, as a pro in, in the field of pharmacognosy and phytotherapy at the Faculty of Pharmacy in Kabul University. He has been working in Afghanistan for uh, more than 30 years as uh, an academic staff. And since 2001, uh, he's, uh, he has been a professor with a focus on teaching and researching pharmacognosy, phytotherapy, in different aspects of medicinal plants, including resources assessments and management of medicinal plants in Afghanistan. Professor Babri completed his bachelor and master in uh, pharmaceutical sciences uh, in Russia. His PhD is from the Philips University of Marburg in Germany. Uh, he has been the uh, Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy at Kabul University. Um, he also served as a Director General for the Pharmacy Authority of the Ministry of Public Health. He had been the Vice Chancellor of Kabul University um, for several years. He stayed as a, he served as a Deputy Minister and also as an Acting Minister for Higher Education Ministry of Afghanistan. Professor Baburi also chaired the uh, governing uh, board of the South Asian University, or Sark University in India. Um, during almost the last two years uh, before the collapse of the democratic setup in Afghanistan, Professor Baburi worked as the president or rector of the Kabul University. Um, now, without further delay, uh, we will turn the time over to Professor Baburi. Uh, to the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akhtar, distinguished Fred, friends, colleagues uh, from Bonn University and other guests for joining us in this virtual meeting. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you for inviting me to, to be with you in this uh, virtual meeting. And secondly, uh, present uh, this uh, important topic uh, from Marburg in Germany uh, uh, regarding Afghanistan medicinal and aromatic plants, uh, what uh, contributes uh, to the primary health care through traditional medicine in, in the country. In the same time, the livelihood of the certain population, especially in rural areas in Afghanistan uh, and socioeconomic life of uh, community. Um, I, I would like to mention that uh, talking about Afghanistan at this uh, very uh, critical period of time uh, for the people of my, uh, of my country and uh, of course myself as well, it's really very difficult. Uh, but uh, um, in any case, I will be delighted if I could uh, reflect and depict uh, the subject as an, uh, let's say, ignored topic in Afghanistan, at least. Um, I'm going to uh, talk uh, uh, firstly and shortly about the geography and physiographic uh, region of Afghanistan, then vegetation, diversity of vegetation, and uh, shortly, probably, uh, about uh, medicinal and aromatic plants of Afghanistan. And what's very important, Afghanistan traditional medicine. And uh, I, I would like to have at the end uh, wrap up and, and, and very short conclusion. Uh, uh, distinguished friends, their colleague, uh, uh, you know that the use of medicinal plants for the treatment of uh, uh, illnesses uh, that's back to the history of human life. Uh, presently, more than 10,000 of the plant species are used in pharmaceutical and cosmetic products uh, worldwide. Uh, in many parts of the world, they continue to play a primary, uh, let's say, substantial role uh, in human health and uh, not only through uh, conventional medicine or uh, phytomedicine, uh, but also through traditional medicine as well. 
uh, even where people have access to hospital, they often choose to use medicinal plants for, of course, for a number of reasons. Um, Afghanistan is an ancient uh, country which uh, rich, uh, with, with very rich nature and rich traditional medicine. Uh, the history of uh, using plants for treating illnesses and traditional medicines among population of the country uh, goes back uh, uh, many millennia. Uh, medicinal and aromatic plants in Afghanistan uh, represent uh, important health and economic component uh, of the country's biodiversity. Uh, the country has uh, uh, very rich uh, floristic uh, uh, diversity. Uh, there are about 5,000 species and with a uh, big share and percentage degree of the endemism. Around uh, one quarter of them, they are endemic for the country. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, uh, yeah, is uh, of course uh, uh, agricultural country, and uh, agriculture has traditionally driven the Afghan economy. Uh, for as, for instance, it was accounting for fifty percent of the uh, gross uh, domestic product or GDP of the economy in nineteen seventy nine, uh, just uh, the beginning of the coup. Uh, and beginning of this tragedy in the country. And 25% and uh, just two or three years ago, uh, most of the medicinal, or let's say mainly medicinal and aromatic plants uh, or, uh, or the product of the wild collection. Uh, and uh, later on, I will ascribe the situation of the land cover of Afghanistan and uh, the reason for that. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, talk uh, a bit about the geography and physiography of Afghanistan. Uh, in fact, uh, as you see in this map, uh, 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 Afghanistan is bisected by the uh, Hindu Kush uh, range of the mountains, which in fact uh, bisect Afghanistan uh, from the middle and divided into two page of the northern and southern of, of Afghanistan. Uh, one of our uh, scholars from Kabul University, uh, very famous, uh, Dr. Horace, uh, he uh, he made a very good analogy in this regard. He wrote that as Egypt has been called the Nile, the gift of Nile, it would be appropriate to call Afghanistan as a gift of the Hindu Kush. Uh, well, uh, due to the um, uh, situation of this Hindu Kush uh, mountain and let's say range inside Afghanistan, uh, the physiology. Uh, physiographic region of Afghanistan can be classified uh, at least to, to the following five uh, areas. Uh, the, the desert region, uh, it is the region, I don't know that, can you see my cursor? Um, uh, that is uh, which, uh, which has the um, uh, altitude or elevation from 500 almost to 1,000 meter. The second we can name the estepic um, uh, and uh, semi estepic, let's say estepic and semi desert region between the desert and central highland of the southern period of Hindu Kush uh, mountain. Uh, it's uh, almost this area. Uh, the third one is the highland, uh, as, as I mentioned it before, which bisect Afghanistan. 
and it's uh, continues up to the border with China. It's very famous. It's called Wuhan Corridor. Uh, the fourth uh, region is the semi-arid plains uh, along Amu Darya on the north uh, part of Afghanistan. Uh, this uh, region covers of uh, area not very big, more than uh, 6,000 uh, uh, quadrat kilometer. And finally, a very uh, narrow uh, strip, which is called subtropical region uh, with uh, 400 to 1,200 elevation uh, of the eastern part of Afghanistan, at, uh, which is uh, making normally the border between Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan. Uh, well, uh, talking about uh, uh, climate, uh, Afghanistan is uh, situated in the subtropical dry zone of Southwest Asia uh, that have continental type of climate. Uh, of course, it uh, can be characterized by desert, uh, as I mentioned before, a steppe and highland temperature and uh, precipitation regime. Uh, Afghanistan is a uh, mostly rather arid country with extreme uh, minimum, uh, less than 50 millimeter uh, precipitation in the southwest and around 1,100 to 1,500 or 400 millimeter in the mountains of the central Hindu Kush uh, to the Wuhan corridor. Uh, precipitation measured about 300 millimeter along much of the northern border uh, and along to uh, Amud area. Uh, the lowland plains in the south of Afghanistan experience uh, extreme seasonal uh, variation and uh, uh, temperature uh, and of course in raining as well. Uh, the temperature at sometimes exceeding 33 uh, degrees um, and, and, uh, and, mean, uh, and, and mean winter uh, temperature is around 10 degrees. Uh, much of the country is at very high altitude and experiences much lower temperature all year with average summer, summer temperature not exceeding uh, 15 degrees in winter, temperature below zero and highest uh, region. Um, it would be, uh, uh, I, I have some beautiful picture uh, there, of course, the real picture made by uh, distinguished our colleagues, Professor Kauskan from different parts of Afghanistan. Of course, there are some pictures uh, made by myself. Uh, it will uh, reflect the uh, physiography and geography of uh, Afghanistan. Um, uh, looking to this slide, uh, we can uh, see the average monthly temperature and rainfall in Afghanistan during 91 to 2020. Uh, I got it from uh, World Bank Group Climate Change Portal. As you see here, uh, during summer period and specifically during June and July and August, uh, the, uh, the temperature raised uh, to the, the average raised to almost to 30 near to 30 degrees but it's it's very holistic for general uh, general for Afghanistan but the rainfall as you see it's uh, critically during this period decrease so it means that uh, during winter period and during uh, fall uh, we have more raining uh, generally in uh, Afghanistan uh, would be nice to talk about the uh, land cover of Afghanistan. Um, uh, as I mentioned, it, uh, Afghanistan is a mountainous country, so therefore a big uh, portion of the um, uh, co land cover of Afghanistan is uh, barren land, 
therefore 27 for this 27 percent plus part of this 47 percent which stand for the rangeland it's uh, uh, mountainous area but anyway rangelands make the uh, bigger uh, portion of the uh, land cover of Afghanistan. Uh, this land is seconded by barren land, as I mentioned it, which occupy with uh, sand covered and dunes. Um, uh, and then uh, only around 12% of the total land area is arable. Uh, as you see here, uh, uh, it's colored by yellow and a bit darker yellow, uh, darker yellow color, um, uh, of which uh, only 5.6% are irrigated agriculture land and 5.8% uh, are rain fed agriculture uh, lands. Uh, of course, uh, there is a, uh, a small portion percentage stand for. Uh, for the forest, uh, which make 2.8 or 9%. Uh, data shows that uh, before the coup in Afghanistan in 79, this percentage was much higher, almost near to more than 4%. Uh, so later on, I will discuss and uh, talk about uh, all those factor exacerbating uh, this decline and the negative uh, effect on the um, uh, environment of uh, Afghanistan. This is a typical uh, picture from Rangeland uh, and Herat province. Um, uh, so you can see here uh, more green area in Kapisa. It's called Shamali Plain in northern uh, part of the Kabul capital of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, you can see um, some uh, coverage of the forest and Panjshir, the same, almost the same picture we have, with more concentrated, uh, of course, forest in the Konar province. Uh, uh, so, the, uh, talking about biodiversity, uh, it is uh, really uh, extensive. Uh, some uh, resources say that there are six in this distinct ecoregion of the 867 land-based ecoregion of the world, as identified by the World Wildlife Fund. Each of these ecoregion represent uh, specific types of vegetation, forest, uh, steppe, and desert ecosystem. Um, there are uh, many uh, uh, different uh, classification of the um, vegetation in Afghanistan, uh, but some of them really are very important. Uh, what is uh, shown here on this slide, this is the work done by uh, our very distinguished and famous old colleagues, Professor Brickley. Uh, who was engaged in natural resources and vegetation of Afghanistan during 60s, 70s, and ever 80s. Uh, now also sometimes he's working, contributing with uh, Professor Kawuskan, uh, with other colleagues in Afghanistan. And I had privilege uh, to work with them in certain areas. Uh, so uh, uh, in this... Uh, 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 a snapshot, uh, Professor uh, Brackley, uh, based on some works done earlier by Freitag in the 70s, he divided uh, this uh, region to at least to eight uh, regions. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, talking about the diversity, probably it's uh, very difficult to, to put a uh, a uh, punctual name for that region. But anyway, as you see, he made uh, this war. For instance, the first region, as you see to the, in the south area, uh, it is called by him uh, Caligunum, 
uh, and uh, Stipa Gruski's area. Uh, it's mainly uh, characterized by uh, alloxylon uh, vegetation. And then uh, later on, you will see here uh, a yellow one, like the yellow one, it's, uh, it's uh, pistachia, uh, Atlantica and uh, amygdalus uh, is characterized in this area. So this, um, as you see, uh, the subalpine and alpine vegetation also it's characterized by some junipers, which is also common in Germany as well. And here, as you see, very green, long uh, uh, length. That is, uh, in fact, as I mentioned it before, it's subtropical area uh, characterized for by uh, some uh, uh, subtropical uh, medicinal plants, especially rutazzi, citrus, uh, olive, and so on. Uh, I do not want to go to the details. Of course, it's very interesting, but it might be not very interesting for the calling the colleagues who are uh, here. And in case there will be any question, I will be happy to then to scrutinize it and talk about that. Well, in this uh, very important table, uh, again, uh, Professor Brickley and his colleague made uh, a very good uh, estimation of the number of families, genera, species, taxa, and the most important endemism in flora of Afghanistan. As you see, uh, number of uh, species is uh, around uh, more exactly 4,826. Uh, it, it's very important to tell you, uh, while Afghanistan doesn't have uh, uh, precise uh, flora uh, scientifically, how he made this estimation. The main uh, resource uh, and uh, reference for his work is the Flora Iranica, uh, made by uh, a very famous uh, Austrian uh, professor, Professor Riechinger, uh, who is in fact the establisher, as far as I know, the Museum of Natural History in Vienna. Vienna. Uh, so that uh, uh, very great work is called uh, Flora Iranica because of some justification. But what's very important, it doesn't comprise all territory of Iran, but it's uh, mainly uh, occupy or, or let's say comprises the uh, Eastern, and northeastern part of uh, Iran, due to some uh, geographical uh, justification, whole Afghanistan area, and uh, some part of certain part of the um, uh, Pakistan, which are mainly bordering to Afghanistan and to uh, uh, which uh, uh, the continuation of the uh, Hindu Kush uh, is uh, vivid there. So what's, as I mentioned it before, the number of endemics and sub endemics is very important. As you see, almost it, it will make 24% of this number, 1,215. This uh, high degree of endemism is a very important or crucial uh, factor for the richness of the vegetation in Afghanistan. Um, so talking about the taxonomy of the species and large plant families, uh, they are, uh, we call uh, large plant families because economically and uh, from the botany point of view, they are very important in making food, uh, economy. Uh, as you see, the uh, Three, four families like Asteraceae, Fabaceae, Puaceae, Brassicaceae, and Lamiaceae, they are the main uh, or the biggest family comprising the um, uh, uh, bigger uh, shares of the species. Of course, there are many other families which are not indicated here. 
uh, for instance, uh, talking about the um, diversity in geography, uh, it's very important to tell you that families which are uh, seem to be uh, endemic in Europe, they are also uh, can be um, found like uh, scrofula riazzi. Uh, that is uh, a family which is very common in, in, in Europe, but we can have also some, some genus and species can be uh, uh, found in Afghanistan uh, as well. Um, uh, as I mentioned it before, uh, rangeland are considered as the main habitat of wild medicinal and aromatic plants in the country. Um, well, uh, uh, in addition, there are many other interesting plant communities in the country which require more study and uh, investigation. Uh, the collection of medicinal plants for medicinal use and folk and traditional medicines as a source of income, as a socio-economic background in Afghanistan. Uh, for many decades, uh, people in uh, rural areas have collected different wild plants, uh, which have uh, traditional uses in the country and also exported to other country and that make an um, important um, share and GDP in the country. Presently, wild collection of medicinal plants is the important source of income generation and uh, alternative livelihood as well for some rural peoples. I'm talking about alternative livelihood because uh, as you know, unfortunately, during uh, at least, uh, let's say, three decades, uh, uh, growing opium, uh, making opium, uh, Papa has become a, a very big, uh, important health, economic, and political problem for Afghanistan. Uh, yeah. What's very important, the emergence of uh, saffron uh, phenomenon. Uh, you may know that the um, uh, wild saffron production in Afghanistan, uh, that's back more than 100 years, cultivation remained marginal until a few decades ago. Uh, saffron is experiencing a very revival in the country for a number of uh, reasons. Uh, uh, Afghanistan become uh, one of the largest exporter of saffron in 2016, uh, based on its remarkable growth rate of 36% uh, annually between 20, uh, 2012 and 2016. Uh, Afghanistan could be a very potential uh, competitor uh, in the world. Uh, and that was the expectation of uh, officials and farmers uh, before this recent uh, critical changes in Afghanistan. Uh, there are some, some uh, pictures from Afghanistan, medicinal plants. Again, they are very important. Ephedra, which is very famous traditionally uh, Afghanistan, uh, is very well known in our traditional medicine. Glaucium flower is another important plant with uh, uh, yellow flowers. It's from the same family like papawe. Uh, it's glaucine, it's uh, containing glaucine as an colloid, which is very famous and well known. Firula, uh, which is very famous uh, in Afghanistan, in Iran, these two countries uh, for more than a century are producing and exporting that. Um, it is important for production of hank, which is a oleagum gum reason. Uh, mainly used as, an, uh, as a spice in many countries, especially in southwest of uh, India and in, 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 in India. Uh, so, 
I'm not going to talk about everyone, but just uh, Glycerhiza, Glycerhiza glabra or Lecuris is another very famous medicinal plant. With Afghanistan is one of the important producer of the Lecuris. And it was one of the main producers 40 years ago, but nowadays also exporting that. Well, um, uh, the volume and value of export of medicinal and aromatic plants products depicted in this table. I tried to have a, a summary from that one. Uh, this number is very big. It's uh, some years it reached to 70 or more than 70 items. But I collected uh, the uh, more dominant items, 25 different products or uh, product of medicinal plants, let's say natural ingredients included here. Uh, I made this estimation for 2016, as you see at the end of the table, only this uh, 25 product in 2016 made $167 million, which is uh, for a country like Afghanistan with a lot of economic problem, vulnerability, it seems to be a tangible number. Um, well, uh, uh, talking about uh, this richness of uh, and diversity of flora is really a pleasure, but, uh, but uh, unfortunately not everything in favor of the resources and uh, environment. There are certain factors affecting uh, wild medicinal and aromatic uh, plant resources and, and uh, subsequently the collection of those uh, uh, plants uh, by the community in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, of course, uh, these resources negatively affected over the course of the last uh, 40 years uh, of the conflict. And of course, it's associated with some other ecological factors, climate change, and so on. Um, um, as you see here, certain factors are indicated, uh, over collection, illegal logging, uh, poppy cultivation, and extension of the um, ranch lands. Um, urbanization, overgrazing, those all the factors that are contributing to the negative uh, uh, effect on these resources. But let me uh, point out that the lack of adequate uh, information and knowledge about natural resources, uh, that is also a very important uh, issue. Uh, in spite of having some uh, strategies, some policy by different ministries, but in a research conducted by me some years ago, I discovered that um, unfortunately, uh, most of those uh, initiatives are on paper. And the situation seems to be very critical in certain uh, areas. Uh, illegal trade, as I mentioned it before, uh, it's very, uh, a critical issue due to the lasting war in Afghanistan, especially a border with Pakistan. Always it's paved the route for, uh, the, for illegal export of uh, this kind of medicinal plants. So this illegal trade and export uh, put very negative uh, uh, effect on the price and pressure on those collectors and uh, community inhabitants from one side, quality from other side. And uh, of course, uh, on, on the taxation and economic of the country from the third side. Uh, well, um, the quality of natural ingredients is a very completely different topic. Uh, I do not want to go uh, in details through that one, uh, but uh, it's very important to tell you that certain prominent items from Afghanistan, they are famous in international market. Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, interesting to share my one experience with you. I have been in, in, in Japan and visiting a company. Uh, the name of this company exactly, it was very similar to Matsubushu. And this company is the main mother company processing all natural product imported to Japan from different country and standardizing them and then mm, selling to other pharmaceutical company. The owner of this company, who was one of the uh, old traders in Japan, he knew very well Afghanistan and, and natural product. He was telling that uh, for after the coup in Afghanistan, during almost um, 30 years, we are importing uh, glyceriza from China, but I assure you that this is not Chinese and not Pakistanis uh, uh, glyceriza or licorice. It's exactly with the same uh, chemical uh, characteristic uh, and values what we were importing from uh, Afghanistan 40 years ago. So uh, 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 one of the important question that I believe that um, can uh, make a tangible change in this area is the certification um, initiative for establishing certification system in this area. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, uh, their uh, distinguished uh, friends, certification is uh, a very um, multidimensional issues. Um, but anyway, it's closely related to the quality because uh, um, uh, certification uh, sometimes can be defined as a process uh, where an unobservable quality level of some product is made known to the consumer through some labeling or stamping system. So that is unfortunately something that become popular in, in international market, especially in developed countries. And therefore you can understand how much this initiative is important for those good products that Afghanistan can uh, export to other countries. Uh, there are certain organization uh, and certain uh, authority who are working in terms of the uh, standardization and issuing uh, formal standard for the uh, export of these ingredients. But I assure you that this information or those uh, uh, certification that they are issuing, it's very formal. Uh, it's not based on evidences. They do not have uh, good uh, laboratory expertise. And therefore, again, all traders who are engaged in this area, they try to get this uh, certification just as a permission to be able to uh, export their uh, natural ingredients. Uh, so of course, certification is, as I mentioned it before, uh, multi-stakeholder initiative with uh, multiple uh, drivers and shifting priorities. And then therefore in many countries, the third uh, party, mainly not governmental, non-governmental organization, they are engaged in this area uh, but anyway, realizing the importance of this natural resources from one side, the importance for uh, consumers and international market from other side, and then the importance for the uh, livelihood of the community. Uh, I think that uh, stepwise establishing certification, I say stepwise, it means because it's required some, first we need to standardize that, then we need to a very clear picture about the, about the quality and then uh, work uh, for the certification and formality. So therefore, I, I put this uh, slide here because of the importance of this issue. 
Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's required to work on a causal chain of intervention for uh, establishing certification system. And that has been studied. It's depicted in this slide. Again, I, of course, I do not want to read everything and go to the detail. Just I will focus to the left side, to this uh, uh, blue color uh, ticks. Uh, so, it's, of course, it's required institutional development, capacity building, uh, labor measures and standards, as partially I described it earlier. And market intervention is another issue. So, long-lasting war in Afghanistan, unfortunately, uh, affected in many ways our market as well. So I believe, uh, based on certain information, uh, that uh, that those are initiatives which could lead to uh, establishing certification system of Afghanistan. Uh, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to shortly talk about the uh, medicinal and aromatic plants used in Afghanistan, traditional medicine. So not all uh, medicinal plants uh, uh, produced in Afghanistan, they are part of, uh, they are uh, mean of the, or, or let's say matter for, uh, for the primary material or for the traditional medicine. Uh, you see a big share, 62 items, 29% of them, uh, they are important, mainly from India. And this number says uh, about many things. Firstly, how much our traditional medicines influenced by, uh, by Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, so there are certain, uh, uh, the total number, as you see, 215. The, um, I mean, those ingredients used in traditional medicine, 51 or uh, the second number is uh, the cultivated, med cultivated medicinal plants and the rest almost 50% uh, made by uh, wild collection. Well, um, yeah, I see that, uh, I am talking more than the time assigned for me, uh, but uh, let me very shortly talk about Afghanistan traditional medicine. Afghanistan traditional medicine is uh, based on a set of uh, systematic uh, philosophical doctrines originating uh, from Greek uh, medicine and classical Greek philosophy. Uh, this uh, uh, medicine also includes a wide variety of therapeutic methods and medicinal uh, preparation that can be attributed, as I mentioned before, to the influence of uh, Indian Ayurvedic medicine, and in the same time, uh, a bit by Persian and Arabic medicine. Uh, <clears throat> So many scholars, uh, very famous scholars, some of them from Afghanistan, like Avicenna, they contributed in, uh, in, in, in developing this traditional medicine. Um, so it's, of course, another topics about the philosophy, about the content of this traditional medicine. But I would like to shortly highlight that uh, we have two kind of, uh, let's say, traditional medicine. One is practiced by traditional traditional healers, and second one for healers. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it would be very nice, uh, probably in future, to talk uh, about uh, those uh, scientific interpretation of those. Uh, theories and views mainly uh, proposed by Avicenna. Uh, you may hear about the canon in medicine, uh, which uh, was used for many centuries in the world as a um, codex or as a, uh, let's say, um, framework of medicine. Uh, 
so that's as you see here highlighted uh, that uh, theory of interaction between the four causes uh, is product of four uh, issues. And if we go through that one, it's really uh, very uh, justify money, money scientific approaches. So there are some pictures from these traditional healers uh, in Kabul. Um, having apologized to talking more than the assigned time, in the end, I would like to uh, conclude uh, shortly that uh, Afghanistan has uh, uh, high floristic diversity. And although the country is rich in great natural history, Unfortunately, recent human history, at least during the last four decades, uh, has not been so kind. And therefore, there are certain factors which are exacerbating this, uh, the situation of this natural resources. Uh, much of the wild uh, flora of the country is experiencing a significant decline in terms of habitat, slots, and unfortunately, degradation as well. Um, unfortunately, uh, as you know, Afghanistan faces a complex and uh, interrelated uh, set of uh, ecological, environmental, uh, economic, and political challenges. Um, the concept of sustainable resource management of medicinal plants um, uh, uh, has been uh, initiated very recently, two years ago in Afghanistan. But unfortunately, due to the change, I, I think that uh, probably this situation will be uh, more complicated. But I, as an Afghan, keep hope for the changes there and, and uh, for paying attention and uh, sustaining, maintaining those initiatives taken in the past and uh, ensure the sustainability of these resources, not only for the, for the present population, but for the next uh, generation of Afghanistan. Thank you very much.